What is up everyone, welcome to Pan Pro Games, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about EV training in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. EV training stands for effort value training, and effort values are points your Pokemon get whenever they defeat a Pokemon, they get these additional points added to their stats to make them stronger. And you can get points for all different types of stats, from HP to speed, attack, special attack, defense, and special defense. So you can really make your Pokemon stronger in so many different ways. And I'm going to show you how to do this today. And it is very important that you're going to be starting your EV training in the post game, because in the post game, you get a lot of tools that make this very easy to do so you can craft your perfect Pokemon. And you may be asking, why would you want to do this? Well, you want to have stronger Pokemon. So one, the battle tower is a lot easier, so you can get a lot of win streaks in the battle tower. Also, so you can play online, beat randoms, beat your friends in school, and just be the greatest Pokemon trainer there is. For this video, I'm going to be EV training this Garchomp because I really want to use a Garchomp on my team. He's such a good Pokemon, and I think a lot of people would agree that Garchomp is a really good Pokemon in competitive singles and doubles play. So our Garchomp here is a good-natured Garchomp. He is jolly, he is minus special attack, and plus speed, which means he's going to be really fast, and we're not going to be using special attacking moves on Garchomp. So if you are making a Garchomp, this is a great nature to have, which is Jolly. However, he has not been EV trained at all. He is completely naked, no EVs in him at all. And if you hit the X button on the screen, you get a second menu on your stats. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. As you can see, this yellow area, which means his EVs are not complete. And we actually haven't put any in them as all the yellow points are right in the middle. Still, if I go to another Pokemon in my party, you can see this is blue which means the EVs have been put into this Pokemon. And I used this Togekiss throughout the game, so it does not have good stats or an EV spread or anything like that. But you can see the different Pokemon that I use in the game. All their stats are everywhere. They're not well-rounded or anything. They're like, you're, they're just, stats are in random places because you've been killing random Pokemon. At least the Gallade has pretty decent attack and speed stats overall, but that was completely accidental. So how do we make our Garchomp good? Well, this is going to be up to you as the player what you want your Pokemon to do. Garchomp is a great physical attacker and he wants to be faster than the opponent. So we're going to be building max attack and max speed. Before we go into the actual methods of raising your EVs, I do want to talk about EVs themselves. So every Pokemon can have 508 EVs and each stat maxes out at 252 EVs. As you can see, 252 pulls the scale all the way to the right here. So you can have EVs ranging from zero EVs to 252. You can actually have 254 EVs in a stat, but the extra two EVs don't bring up a stat point. Because as you can see here, if we put it to zero and we type in four, attack went up by one. If we put in six, attack is still only up by one. But if we put in eight, attack went up by two. So every four EVs gives you one more point into that stat. So how most Pokemon are usually built, they're usually built with 252 in one stat, 252 in another stat. So the idea for this Garchomp build is 252 in, in attack and 252 into speed. And we have four EVs left over, which means we can put in one more point into Garchomp. So usually if you're having a build where it's focusing on an offensive Pokemon, so if you're raising their attack or special attack and their speed, usually you could just put four points in HP. Uh, another spread is you could do attack in HP and then you could put four points in the speed. That is up to you to decide, but this is how EVs actually look. The game does not give you the hard numbers like this, which is why it's great to use some sort of build simulator like Pokemon Showdown to really show you and test out the Pokemon to make sure once like you commit to it that you actually enjoy it. There are two good methods of EV training in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And the first one I'm going to be showcasing is EV training by defeating Pokemon. And the best way to do this is one, you want to be in the post game and you want to go to the battle park. And in the battle park, we're going to go to the battle tower and we're going to head inside right over here. And we're going to go to the lady on the left here and she will sell us for battle points, EV training items. She also has a lot of great stuff, ability patch, ability capsule and bottle caps, rare candies. All her stuff is incredible for making your Pokemon good, but in today's video, we're just going to be focusing on these power items. So these power items actually boost the EVs you get, and each one uh, correlates to a different 
EV that it would boost. So this one right here, the power one, increases your attack stat. So it's pretty interesting because normally when you defeat a Pokemon, you either get one or two EVs based on whatever they're going to give you. And I'm going to give you a list of which Pokemon are the best at EV training. However, it's going to take a long time. If, if let's say a Pokemon gives you two attack EVs, well, you're going to have to defeat it about what, like a hundred and some times, right? Like you don't want to do that. No one wants to do that. But let's say your Pokemon's holding a power bracer. Well, for every time you defeat a Pokemon that gives you two EVs, this power bracer is going to give you an additional eight. So now you only have to defeat the Pokemon 25 times. So that's going to save you a lot of time if you want to max your attack stat. And of course, all that would apply to these items as well. So you can get your defense up by 10, special attack up by 10, so on and so forth. I do recommend getting the attack, special attack, speed, and HP ones first if you are low on BP. But you do want them all so you can have a much easier time raising your Pokemon's EVs. And let's not forget the berries down here. Let's say you make a mistake in EV training, you take out a Pokemon you don't want to take out, and now you mess up the perfect Pokemon they were trying to make. Well, these berries, if you feed them to a Pokemon, will lower their EV stat by 10. So this berry will lower by HP, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, sp and speed by 10 points. Also the bonus, they increase the Pokemon's happiness as well. If you have any Pokemon that evolve by happiness, you can actually spam these berries. And of course you can regrow these berries so you don't have to come back here and buy them all the time. And here are the best Pokemon to fight to increase your EVs. So starting at HP, you wanna to go to Route 218 to fight Gastrodons, as it'll give you two HP EVs. And on Route 212, you can actually attack both the Barrel and Krikatoon, and both of them will give you two attack EVs. So that's gonna be a great place for attack EVs. And then for defense, you either can go to Eternity Forest and fight either Silcoon or Cascoon. They give you two defense EVs. Or you can go to Iron Island or Mount Cornet to fight Graveler that can also give you two defense EVs. Special attack, you have a lot of options. On the northern side of Route 212, you can fight Roselia that gives you two special attack EVs. Or you can just go to Valor Lakefront and fight Giraffe Ridge that gives you two special attack EVs. And then Send Off Spring, which is a post-game area, you can fight Golduck who gives you two special attack EVs. Special defense, we don't have a lot of options, but Route 223 has tentacles that you can farm that give you two special uh, defense EVs. And last but not least is speed. On Route 218, you can fight Float Zells that will give you two speed EVs. And you only have to knock out 25 of each of these Pokemon if you have the respectable power item with it. So now that I showed you which Pokemon you can farm, you may be thinking that is a lot of work. And I 100% agree, that is a lot of work. So the technique here is for the second method, just use vitamins. And vitamins increase our Pokemon's EVs by 10. So 25 proteins will increase our Garchomp's attack by 250. And then we'd only need to take out one Pokemon to get to that max of 252 for our EVs. And the same thing with the speed, there's 25 Carbos and then get our speed to 250 and just knock out one Float Zell to get our speed up to 252. That is gonna be the fastest way. The only issue is you gotta be rich and I'm pretty wealthy right now, but we could be a little bit richer. So the best way to get rich is you want to be on Route 210, where I am right now, next to these two trainers that are running in circles. And you can access this after you get Defog. So once you get Defog, you can actually farm money here. And I have made a whole video on farming them. But the point here is you can keep rebattling these trainers by using the item Verse Seeker, which you get through the story. And Verse Seeker recharges about every like 50 to 100 steps. And whenever you use the Verse Seeker, there's a chance that the trainers nearby will want to battle you. It may take a couple attempts, but the trainers will eventually be ready to battle you. And then when you battle them, it's going to be a double battle. And this double battle is very easy overall. They have a Raichu and a Gyarados at level 27. I'm using a Togekiss, which has Dazzling Gleam, which can hit both of them neutrally and one-shot both of them. And I also turn off battle animations to make this as quick as possible. So all you got to do is select Dazzling Gleam, knock them both out, but any move that hits both Pokemon works as well. And of course, turning off battle animation saves you so much time. It's crazy, honestly. It's It will save you so much time. It's very significant. So we're just going to beat them. And I'm also, I forgot to mention, I am holding an amulet coin on my Togekiss. I did forget to mention you should hold an amulet coin on one of the two Pokemon that is in this fight because it will double the money you receive, which does make this the best money farming method in the game. 
So once you do this for maybe half an hour to an hour, you should have a lot of money to be able to go to the department store and buy a lot of vitamins. And there you can see the 26,000 came up on the screen. And now we're ready to go to the department store. And now in Veilstone City, all we need to do is go through the Pokemon Center and then up past the Pokemon Center to the department store. And then we're going to be heading up to the second floor of the department store. And then we're going to be talking to the lady at the front desk right here in the middle. And then she sells us vitamins. And as you can see, vitamins are expensive. They're nearly $10,000. So each, I mean, it's going to be a lot of money to buy 25 of each. You're going to be buying 50 vitamins. However, it is worth it considering the time. And it doesn't take too much time with the money farming method I just showed case. So you want to buy 25 of each. I already have three. So I'm going to be buying 22 here. And you can see how this really adds up to be a lot of money right there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the carbos. I already had three. So we're just going to go up to 22 here and I'm nearly broke. It's going to take a lot of money, but think about that. If you buy 20, if you one Pokemon takes maybe about half a million dollars, but if you get a million dollars, you can get knocked out two Pokemon pretty easily of all that. And then we're just going to pop the pills into our Garchomp here. So I have fed the Garchomp all the vitamins. And as you can see, it's attack and speed are incredibly higher than they were when we started this video and if you hit the x button you can actually see that our attack and speed stats are sparkling which means both of them have been maxed out so that's how you know when your stat is maxed out so that's a great indicator that you've done this process right if it's not maxed out but you thought it would be try to feed the pokemon some berries so you can lower some stats that it may have gotten some additional evs from experience share can give the pokemon evs so just keep that in mind that you may need to farm a little bit of the berries to keep your Pokemon's EVs low on like special attackers, defense or special defense, because I had to do that. I didn't realize like, oh, what's going on? It's like, oh, I had a couple of points in these stats I didn't want. Well, guys, that is how you EV train your Pokemon in Bro and Diamond, Shiny and Pearl. If you enjoyed this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys next time with more Pokemon action. Peace out and have a good one.